Uh, hi, I'm glad to be uh, able to communicate with uh, my friends directly in person and, and to be able to have access to a screen to explain my points that cannot be uh, conveyed uh, verbally without a screen, which is why I don't like to discuss uh, the problems of GMOs and risk management and precautionary principles with journalists because it's, you know they drown you in words. This is much simpler. We're not going to use much math, just the graphs where you explain what the point is. The discussion is about the difference between reducing risk and increasing benefits. They're two different animals. One concerns the left tail of distribution, the risk. The other one concerns the right tail of distribution. And, and often, by increasing benefits, you effectively increase the risks, and it's actually worse for ruin probability. So these are uh, two distributions here I'm going to draw quickly, uh, uh, one with high variance and one with low variance. And you know very, uh, you can see that high variance uh, has uh, more mass in the tails, therefore higher risk of ruin, and we're interested in the risk of survival and ruin. So to compensate, you can add some mean to that yellow curve and to the orange curve. And, and of course, uh, you can see that there are benefits. We move from here, the center, at 0 to center at 1. So there appear to be benefits to a policy. But look, we have increased uncertainty. You cannot increase benefits without accepting some kind of increase in uncertainty because you're entering unknown territory. So my discussion now is to show that tail probabilities don't really care about benefits at all. They just care simply about uncertainty. And the more you go in the tails, the more you care about uncertainty. There are various ways, three uh, r r methods that are you know, quite related, three methods by which we, re we analyze uh, tail risk or ruin probability, stuff like that. The first two are user insurance. Uh, the first one is what's called a shortfall. It's how much you analyze, how much the area is under the curve times uh, the, the, the conditional uh, uh, expectation under some number. And you divide it by the unconditional, the conditional shortfall is divided by the probability of getting there. The unconditional shortfall, you just take the expectation under some number that we call k. k is usually used for, as, for strike, usually. And then the final one is the easiest one to grab, grasp is the option trader one. The first one uh, are, is used by insurance, uh, and it's called, of course, uh, conditional shortfall. The second one isn't used directly. It's used indirectly in things. And we used it in uh, our uh, uh, analysis of fragility because it lends itself to mathematical manipulation much better than the other ones and get the same to get the same result, of course. And then the final one is an option trade of really dollars and cents. An option is a put. How much would you be willing to pay for that put that ensures you against losses beyond some level K? That's simple. So the put price is simply the uh, the, the 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 value of that kind of, of financial contract that pays you below K. But you can you know translate it non-financial contract. You can translate it into other things. Uh, that's just a quantity that's very easy, and of course it correlates to the other measures of insurance. So, very simple. We st we have here the value of that option at say one penny. That's the value per unit that that we need to insure to insure, to avoid total ruin, and we can see easily that changing the mean, increasing the mean doesn't lower the option much. Look. It's not reacting much to mu, and mu, the mean is going up by monstrously uh, high numbers of standard deviation for a very out of money option. But you increase standard deviation, and look, now multiplied it by 25 times, by 30 times, you, 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 and of course, it can go up to 100,000 times. <laughs> not in this case because it's a penny, but uh, some uh, cheaper option go much higher. So, what is the conclusion here? The conclusion is that. When people offer you benefits of some uh, policy in an unknown domain, like GMOs, you have to consider them. They have benefits, they may have benefits. But those who offer you 
a benefits analysis do not quite um, are not also giving you a uh, risk analysis. It's a different business. You do need to do a risk analysis on the side. There's also another problem with GMOs, of course, is that all the studies of effectiveness, whatever it is, all these people say evidence, it's not really evidence. It's evidence up to that tail event, some tail event, which in fact is much closer than what we're dealing with here. So in other words, they're not really giving you any information about the risk, they're just giving you information about the potential benefits at some confidence level that's not very tight. Thank you for listening.